So let's continue our discussion on electromagnetic radiation, also known as electromagnetic waves. Now just like mechanical waves carry energy when they propagate through a medium, electromagnetic waves also carry energy when they propagate over vast distances through empty space. Now, because electromagnetic waves are composed of alternating electric and magnetic fields, that basically implies all the energy stored inside electromagnetic waves is stored within the electric and magnetic fields. So let's suppose we have the following electromagnetic wave. So we see that along the y-axis, when the wave is traveling along the x-axis, the electric field shown in green is moving, is changing along the y-axis, while our magnetic field is shown in blue and is changing along the z-axis. So the wave is propagating through our empty space as it's traveling in the positive direction along the x-axis, and all the energy is stored within these electric and magnetic fields. Now, in our discussion on the energy stored inside waves, it is very useful to discuss energy density rather than simply energy. Now, recall that energy density is simply the quantity of energy stored per unit volume. So that means the units of energy density are joules per meter cubed. Now, in our discussion on the energy stored inside electric fields, we were able to show that the energy density inside electric field is equal to one half multiplied by epsilon naught multiplied by the square of the electric field. And in our discussion on the energy stored inside magnetic fields, we were able to show that the energy density within magnetic fields is equal to one half multiplied by the square of the magnetic field divided by mu naught where epsilon naught is the permeativity of free space and mu naught is the permeability of free space. These are both constants. Now because as we see in this depiction of our electromagnetic wave, because electromagnetic waves consist of both electric fields and magnetic fields, that means the total energy density within our electromagnetic wave given by by lowercase u is equal to the sum of the energy density of the electric field and the energy density of our magnetic field. Now ue can be replaced with this equation and ub can be replaced with this equation and we get the following result. So, this equation essentially gives us the total energy density stored inside our propag propagating electromagnetic wave. Now, we can also use this equation to essentially determine the energy density of our propagating electromagnetic wave only in terms of the electric field. So we want to determine the equation for the energy density in terms of only the electric field E. Now, recall in a previous lecture, we were able to show that our speed of our electromagnetic wave in empty space C is equal to the ratio of the electric field E and the magnetic field B. And we said that this is equal to 1 divided by the square root of the product of epsilon naught, the permeativity of free space, and mu naught, the permeability of free space. Now, if we take this equation, this ratio is equal to this ratio, we can use this to to express our magnetic field in terms of the electric field and these two constants as shown in the following equation. So the magnetic field B is equal to the product of the electric field E and the square of the product of these two constants. Now, 
if we take this equation and we replace our magnetic field B with this product, we get the following result. Now, if we square the product of E and the square root of these two values, we get E squared multiplied by epsilon naught multiplied by mu naught, the radical simply disappears. Now, because mu naught will appear on top and bottom, we can cancel that out and we get the following result. So U, the energy density of our electromagnetic wave, is equal to this, one half epsilon naught multiplied by the square of E plus one half E squared multiplied by epsilon naught. So if we combine these two terms, the twos will cancel and we're left with the following equation. So we see that the energy density of our electromagnetic wave is equal to the product of E squared and epsilon naught, the permeativity of free space. So this is the equation that gives us the total energy density of the electromagnetic wave only in terms of the electric field. Now if we follow a similar procedure, we can also determine the equation for the energy density only in terms of the magnetic field B. So once again we begin with this equation. E divided by B is equal to 1 divided by the square root of mu naught multiplied by epsilon naught. So now, instead of expressing B in terms of E, we want to express E in terms of B. And that is shown in this equation. So now, once again, we take this equation and we replace essentially our electric field with our magnetic field as shown in this result. So notice that this quantity squared simply amounts to B squared divided by the radical disappears mu naught multiplied by epsilon naught. So now we have epsilon naught on top and bottom. We can cancel those out and we're left with the following result. So, the energy density of our electromagnetic wave is equal to the sum of these two terms. So we sum up these two terms, the twos cancel, and we see that the energy density of our electromagnetic wave is equal to B squared divided by mu naught, the permeability of free space. So we have three different equations that each give us the energy density of our electromagnetic wave. Equation 1 describes our energy density in terms of these two constants and the electric field and magnetic field at any given moment in time. The second equation gives us the energy density of the electromagnetic wave in terms of the permeativity of free space and the electric field. And finally, the final equation gives us the energy density in terms terms of the permeability of free space and our magnetic field B. So notice that E and B represent the strength of our fields at any given moment in time of our electromagnetic wave that is propagating through empty space.